Oh my gosh. I know, Gav McKenzie. Yeah. That is crazy. Uh, I'm excited about this one. I bet. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. This this woman has written uh, comedy. She's uh -huh. written uh, for video games, and she's even written speeches for ambassadors. That's amazing. I know. And she's did astrology too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She's a bit eccentric. She is a little bit eccentric. How yeah, do you know? Sure. Well, I just know. Uh -huh. Yeah. You ready? I'm ready. Yeah. Are you guys ready? You guys ready? All right. Let's do this. I'm ready. Let's do this. Hi. Hey. Gabrielle McKenzie, <laughs> yes. welcome to the show. Thank you very it is, much. It is such an honor to have you here. Is it? Welcome. It is. Good. It is because you are a, uh, I uh, am. a person <laughs> who wears myriad hats. I certainly do. You've got a lot of experience, Indeed. right? I have a lot the, of experience. You've done so many things. I have. So many. Some that I'd like to forget. <laughs> yes. But yes. I know that today you're going to draw them out of me. Well, well, yes, only, the, only the ones that we can, you know, we feel we can extort. Really, so, yes. Yeah. <laughs> extort. Yes. Yeah. Did I say that? Um, out loud, yes. Oh. He's got like an, he doesn't have an inside my head voice. You know, some people have these thoughts yeah. and they think, no, no. oh, I shouldn't say that. He missed he just, that part when they were handing out bits. Yes. Yeah. He bits. just says everything. <laughs> I got the bits. I just Good. didn't get the Glad right part. Good. Glad to hear part. it. You uh, <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. So, tell. I mean, start. Let's go way, the, way back, back to the back. beginning. Just yeah, go back to kind of the first time you entertained the idea of writing something. Yes. What influenced you? Why did you think this was what you? you I remember to do? it actually quite. Do you? Quite well, yeah. Okay. Uh, I was influenced by icebergs. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's. Who isn't? <laughs> Every time I see one, I, I want. I want to drink. I want to write. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I was um, I was sorry. on the Queen Elizabeth. It was a big luxury liner. Boat, yeah, yeah. And we were stuck in the middle of the Atlantic because of icebergs. So I was only seven, and I became incredibly bored, as did all the other young people on the board. So I had seen a couple of Shakespearean plays, and I thought, wouldn't it be fun to put on a Shakespearean production to entertain people? during the time that we are stranded here in the middle of the ocean. Mm -hmm. So um, I had only seen one play, but I'd heard about some of the others. So I decided to put on Hamlet. And um, I, I had a, a sort of troop of about 20 children. And I gave them all parts, and we found sort of costumes and things. But I couldn't quite remember how Hamlet went. So I wrote a combination of Shakespearean plays. I put them all together. And the opening of Hamlet had sort of three witches with the cauldron. And then all kinds of drama went on until the final scene where um, Hamlet was bludgeoned to death by Juliet. Um, <laughs> however, in his very last breath, he sat up and shot her with a small caliber revolver through the eyes. And then the House of Montague uh, slaves dragged them off by their heels. And you were know, seven. I was seven. You were seven. <laughs> and I was devastated mm -hmm. because everyone in the audience, it was quite full, the theater, and they all thought it was really funny. And, you know, Hamlet is a tragedy. Mm -hmm. And so I, I didn't write again for the longest time. Until I was eleven, I could see yes. that. Yeah, that, that would be so, traumatic. So, it would be traumatic. So this was the sure. very first thing you ever wrote. The very first thing. was on board the the, the, the Queen, Queen Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Yes. yes, that's a rather um, uh, infamous start. One would think it is. Huh? How long did it take you though? Did you like but between the time you you had the idea to actual execution? What was your timeline? Like how long did it take you to write this up? And well, it took me everything. overnight. I stayed up all night long. Ah, okay. Yes, while my mother was partying with the captain, I was sitting in our in our cabin writing, mm -hmm. and then of course getting all the other children organized was a nightmare mm -hmm. because you know some of them didn't even speak English. Well, you know actors. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I did that, and yeah. then I thought, oh well, I think I'll give up this career. I'll in, try something really, else. Yeah. Until you were 11. And until then yeah. at 11, age 11, inspiration hit it did. again? It did. Again, in a moment of boredom. Okay. Um, I was at boarding school and uh, bored. And so we were hungry because the food at boarding school was horrible. So I thought, I had heard that Mars Bar, the Mars Bar company, whenever they had rejects that didn't quite <laughs> measure up, 
they would throw them out. Uh -huh. So I thought, aha, opportunity strikes. So I wrote a poem to the president of Mars Bars requesting all of his rejects. Mm -hmm. If he could send them to Huntington School, we would be delighted. Mm -hmm. So we sent off this letter and we waited for a few weeks. And finally we got um, a package, a large package in the mail with a poem from the president of Mars Bars explaining that the rejects actually went back into production. They remelted them. Okay. okay. And put, so whenever you're eating a Mars bar, it could be a recycled Mars bar. Um, but he sent us. <laughs> Good to know. He sent us an enormous box uh -huh. of everything they made wow. as a reward. But it was wow. his letter, and I tried to find the letter to bring here today oh. to yeah. read to you because it was amazing. His poetry was lovely and we were incredibly touched. So we oh. took us about six months to eat all of this. All oh, the candy. Wow. Yes. yes. Did you check the expiry dates? Because I'll bet no, they were we probably they, long they gone. They didn't have expiry dates. Yeah. Well, they didn't, they didn't no. but this was in England, correct? This was in England, so this yes. Was a, yeah. and People so dropped Mars dead all the time in England because of that. You came to Ottawa. You live in Ottawa. Yes, I live in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. And um, I was doing a number of things that weren't terribly interesting. And and then I was approached by the Palm Beach Post. The now, newspaper? Yes, yes, okay. yes, in the States. Mm -hmm. um, and um, they asked me if I would be interested in writing an astrology line for them. Actually, it would be a recorded astrology line that people could phone in and listen to their predictions. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, it, this, this line was called Madame Gabrielle. And I also had another person involved in it who was a fellow called Tony Casino who pretended to be my bodyguard. Mm -hmm. And so the two of us, for two years, we would make up, of course it's, you know, Fake. complete charlatans, mm -hmm. yeah. make up all of these predictions that mm -hmm. people in Palm Beach would phone in and we had quite a following of people and they would actually live by our predictions, apparently. <laughs> so this led to a few catastrophes, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Um, and eventually, after two years of being employed by them, they decided that they'd had so many complaints that um, <laughs> they decided that they should be more socially minded. So they gave the project to homeless people who were sitting on a, a park bench outside the Palm Beach newspaper headquarters. Uh -huh. They armed them all with cell phones, and they found that their predictions were just as accurate as ours. Wow, yes. that's interesting. Yes. Did you have any experience uh, with astrology? None whatsoever. Okay. No, 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 <laughs> Can you give us an none. example of one, of one of your predictions? Like, do you remember? I do. I actually remember one. Okay. Um, and uh, I was, um, it was the weekend that Diana had died. Princess oh. Diana. Tragic. Mm -hmm. um, and in my predictions, I had actually given a prediction for, for Prince Charles at that time to be very mindful of anything to do with inheritances. So I thought that was quite incredible. I almost started to think that maybe I had a talent. Maybe you didn't have a gift. Yeah. Well, intuition. You never know. You're probably very intuitive. Mm, perhaps. Yes. <laughs> so, I mean, you're <laughs> we're covering a, a lot of, of very interesting yes. um, elements yes. of yes. your writing career, and I feel like we're just getting started. Like, how oh, yes. you, we started at seven, and then eleven. Yes. Astrology. Yes, astrology. I mean, and, astrology and, is, what, is when, roughly, like, how many the years ago? The astrology, are you trying to, are you asking me how old I am? It's you should like, never no, ask a woman I'm how not, old she is. No, no I'm never. not asking. I, I'll guess later, but I, I <laughs> well, I'm just, in the, in the timeline of things, like yes. all the things you've done, so. Yes, I would have been in sort of, you know, I would, it would have been maybe 15, 20 years later. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Um, and that and was then, really the next step from... For writing. for writing. I mean, there were all kinds of other things in between yeah. that we won't go into now. <laughs> yeah, you still have a warrant It's another yes, show. Yeah. Exactly. Or a drink later. <laughs> exactly. So, let's see. The next thing, I think, was... Um, yes, it was the wrong answers for Jeopardy. What? Mm -hmm. So, these programs, um, these game shows, yes. something like Jeopardy, Yeah. Um, there is a right answer. Uh-huh. But there are also a bunch of wrong answers okay. that have to be formulated. So for two weeks, I was placed in a room with a couple of other writers, mm -hmm. and we had to come up with all of the wrong answers for the CD-ROM version, the, the, the computer version oh. of Jeopardy. Jeopardy. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. And so I thought, this is going to be easy, because you'll just think of ridiculous, ludicrous answers. But mm -hmm. of course, it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. no. You have got to get answers 
that are very close similar to the, to the, to the right but uh -huh. not yeah. quite mm -hmm. yeah. so um, it was actually quite challenging far more challenging than being an astrologer <laughs> <laughs> of course. I bet. Of course, because you actually had to deal with some facts. Yeah, so how, did, do you apply, yeah. did you apply for that job? No, or did no, you, somebody just no. called you? And yes, somebody called me and wow. uh, thought that I might be able to, uh, that I might have an interest mm -hmm. in the wrong answers. Right. Well. Yes, yeah. which I always have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My next undertaking was, um, I, it didn't ask me how, but anyway, I ended up, going to work as the assistant to the ambassador of Yemen. Oh, yes. So yes. I'm not really seeing any dots no, there no, no, at no, all. No. Yeah. Um, no. It was sort of like the wrong answers. It was maybe the wrong decision. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, but. <laughs> but nevertheless, mm -hmm. there I am. What I found interesting about writing speeches is that, of course, you don't have to, you have to write something that's very passionate but you don't actually have to believe anything that you're writing. So it's almost like method writing, because you have to become a male Muslim around 65 years old who is a former neurosurgeon, and you have to be able to write as he would write, because of course everybody wants, he wants everybody to think that he had written the speech. Yes. Um, so, um, you have to transform yourself into this other individual mm -hmm. and write as they would write, as wow. all speechwriters do. They yeah. all have to trans transform themselves into the person that they're writing for. Mm -hmm. Now, when you write for uh, a diplomat, an ambassador, you're not just writing for your target audience who will be listening to the speech. All of these speeches go back to the home country to be read by the president to make sure that he approves because a diplomat is supposed to be towing the line of right. the existing government. Mm -hmm. And their approval would be, would be, had to be obtained before the no, diplomat could make the speech? No, it's, it's afterwards. So oh, afterwards. It's afterwards. Okay. So you have to be very careful what you write, mm -hmm. but it will be in accordance with the way the president also thinks. Okay. Wow. Now, that's all very well when everything is calm in the country. But when you have a dictator who's about to be overthrown, um, it becomes very difficult because your ambassador will be thinking in terms of, especially if he has ambition politically, the speech will be geared towards his target audience, but it might also be geared towards the population who may have a different view to the actual dictator of mm -hmm. the country. And then you have to decide whether the dictator is about to be overthrown or not, and what the chances are that he will, in fact, be overthrown. Because if he's not overthrown and you write something that's contradictory to his way of thinking, um, when you go back to your country, you may be shot. Okay. So yeah. it's a question of, it's very, very delicate. And I found that fascinating. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so yeah. sometimes, especially with my next ambassador, who is now the prime minister of Yemen, um, He's, his English was, was, was not bad at all, um, and so we would decide beforehand if, in fact, the government didn't fall, would he like to be killed quickly or slowly? So that's how we would decide how we would write the speech. Wow. See, that's a very pressing yes. uh, yeah. question. I've never had to <laughs> ask that wow. question of myself. Wow. Yes. And so, as well, well, the government was overthrown, and oh so goodness. that changed the... Uh, the makeup of the speech writing yeah. completely because then we were appealing to the people mm -hmm. right. who had just yeah. overthrown the government. Right. So it was yeah. very, very interesting. Again, very different to the wrong answers of Jeopardy and also very different to astrology. astrology. Yeah. Although there were some connections there. I bet. Predicting yeah. what was going to happen. Yeah. It's funny too, you know, because we, we find that sometimes um, when you take a, a job, you have no idea where that's going to go, exactly. where that may um, may take you, exactly. you know, and it sounds like from what you have described to us, one ha you, you went from Hamlet to yes. you know, writing for a, a speech writer. Yes, right? yes, it was and really very, very, an interesting journey. Yeah. So did you sure. pretty much BS your way through all I of did, your exactly. <laughs> that is from beginning that is. to end. <laughs> so are you ready for this? No. Okay, good. <laughs> Here we go. When was the last time you skated on the Rideau Canal? Never skated on the Rideau okay. Canal. What is your favorite park in Ottawa? 
Uh, Vincent Massey. Okay. Good answer. Have you ever been inside the Parliament buildings? I have indeed, <laughs> yes. What is your favorite bar in the Byward Market? I hardly drink at all, but if I was going to drink massive quantities, um, I would probably go to the Chateau Laurier. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. Where do you go to be recognized most in Ottawa? I like to wear dark glasses, so I try not to be recognized ah, okay. at all. Okay. What was the last Ottawa restaurant you dined and dashed at? Ah, that would have been um, the Chateau Laurier. Uh, yes. And what would be your favorite street uh, to street on? Dalhousie. Okay. What is the uh, name of the establishment that you were last kicked out of? Ah, <laughs> the casino at La Clini. Ah, good for you, good for you. And where in Ottawa was the last place you were arrested? Um, I was arrested on the Gatineau side. I just crossed over the border. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> is it contraband? Is it a long no, story? No, parking violations. Oh, mm -hmm. parking. all right. Then you can read parking. the last question, Allison. Which area of town did you go through a ride program successfully? Ah, that would have been uh, on the Gatineau side again. Um, really? You can successfully go through a riding program in Gatineau? I did, because when they stopped me and they said anything to drink tonight, ma'am, I said, oh, no, thank you, I've had more than enough. And uh, <laughs> so they gave me a ride. Home. Home. Oh, yes, very yes, good. Very good. Yes, very sweet. Oh, yes, very sweet. That's wow. funny. So of all the, the writing stuff that you've done, of all your experience that you have, mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you enjoy the most? What brings you the most pleasure when it comes to writing? Ah. And I, and I, and I guess I'm, I, I want to give you a choice between, let's say, comedy and, and, <clears throat> and like the, the speech writing. Yes. You know, like where you have some freedom, maybe you don't have as much. Well, I, I do, I must say, I do enjoy the comedic writing. And so mm -hmm. even in the most serious speech, I will try to put in a little bit of, of humor. Um, I mean, when things in the home country are going badly, um, you try to inject some humor about how things are going to turn around. Ha ha. Mm -hmm. And when things are going very, very bad, you find somebody else to blame. Mm -hmm. and so that's fun. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that, you know, I have had an opportunity to, to, to do comedic writing. In, in my own life, mm. and and I really love it because it comes <laughs> relatively easy. Yeah. And if you weren't a writer, what do you think, what other profession do you think you may pursue? Well, I think you've had a few professions, right? <laughs> I have like, had a few. Yeah. I, think, um, I think the best profession would have been to have um, settled down with a gentleman with extremely large personal assets so you don't, in fact, have to work. I hear you. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Anything else? Not really a career, so to speak. Uh, I could have made it. It could be a career. Um, Come on. Yeah. So, but no, you have had other things, like you've... Talk about tennis. Tennis. For Norm tells tennis. me that you did you play tennis or no, did I was you tour? An athletic supporter. Oh, an athletic supporter. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. yes. okay. And so I had a boyfriend who was a, a pro, a professional tennis player, okay. and we traveled throughout the U.S. and South America, mm -hmm. and um, that was quite interesting. It sounds glamorous, but uh -huh. of course. You know, it's only fun when they're winning. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or so. bad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you also had your own uh, clothes company or clothes I designing? Did. Yes, you I You actually did. made yes. clothes. Yes, I did. I made yeah. clothing. I started off with one seamstress, and then I ended up um, with about 20 people in my house every day manufacturing garments that were shipped to, well, I had about 160 boutiques that sold the oh clothes. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Yeah. Is there is there something that's way that that you haven't written yet, like the greatest thing that you well, still haven't written? Well, yes, I'm I'm working right now um, on a, an idea. Okay. Yes, that I think I think I don't know. I just think it has legs. Um, I don't know if you remember uh, the Beachcombers, which was a, a yes. Was a yes family. That was a, that yeah. was a uh, staple Canadian show. Yes, it yes, was. it was yeah. pure and yeah. wholesome. And um, it was incredibly successful as well. It was sold all throughout North America, and I think even in Europe. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I watched a few of the episodes, and I thought that perhaps a little remake 
might be in order. And um, right now I'm working on a, an idea. Um, it's, it's for a little reality show, and it's, um, it's about three women who uh, decide that they you know, need some, to find a peaceful place to live to get away from national revenue, really. And um, they see in a drunken stupor one night, they watch the beachcombers. They find an old episode of the beachcombers, and it's set in a beautiful place called Gibson's, which is in just north of Vancouver. Yes. And they decide that this is really a place that they might be able to find solace, mm -hmm. and where national revenue might not be able to find them, because it's kind of out of the way. Right. So um, they decide that they are going to go and live in Gibson's and open a pet grooming school, a doggy grooming place, yeah. a spa, really, for animals. And it's going to be called the Bitch Comers. <laughs> and they are going to have a yacht moored in the harbor there. And uh, oh, they are thinking that they will become, you know, beloved mm -hmm. members of society in Gibson, yeah. since yeah. the people will bring all their animals to be mm -hmm. bathed and cut and mm -hmm. manicured. Right. And uh, so it will be the story of these three women who are outcasts from society trying to make good mm -hmm. of themselves in Gibson's and redeeming their lives and you yeah. know, becoming grand dames of society in Gibson. I think it's a hit. I think so. I think it's I a so. modified I, hit. I do. I do. Yes. I like to see yeah. it now. Would you like to invest? <laughs> <laughs> Alison, do I have a chance? Yeah. Possibly. Uh, Possibly. Wow. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. So, and, and that's that's an actual uh, that's a project you're yes, writing for. Yes, I, I this. This is a, a TV series that you're. Yes, this would be a TV yeah. series, a mm -hmm. reality, a scripted reality. A script, yeah. Yes, yeah. because they all are yeah. scripted. Yeah. But, um, so I, that's what I'm working on right now. Wow, cool. Yes, yes, so that's that would be fun. Yeah, and yeah. and you're excited about that. I am. Yeah. I am excited about that. Yes, because um, well, my days at the embassy are probably numbered. I don't know, especially when they. See this <laughs> when they when they see this show for sure. Yeah, yeah. When, when this That's airs, it. gone, yeah. gone. It's yeah. nice to be in control of something too. You it know, is. it's nice to have that project, yeah. own it, be in control of it, know that you can sit down when you want to and write when you want to. It is. It is having freedom is freedom. very important. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. freedom, staying out of jail. That's one thing. <laughs> very important. It's huge. Yes, huge. That's huge. Nice work. If you, if you get it. Yeah. It is. yeah. So, if you could give any aspiring writer across the board one piece of advice, what do you think that would be? What would that be? Um, well, I think to just sort of um, not be afraid. I think that fear engulfs us all mm -hmm. uh, today <clears throat> because of political correctness and a variety of reasons. Does it really matter what people think? Just write what you feel. And um, some people aren't going to like it. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, your ambassador may be shot when he goes home. But it's not really your fault. And um, just write what you feel. <laughs> people will be able to relate to even the most difficult thing that you write mm -hmm. about. Yeah. And I think if you're writing from a sincere place, that's where people relate. I think and people can see through when yes. you're writing just to put words on a piece of paper rather absolutely. than something absolutely. that's coming from the heart. Yeah, definitely. And you clearly have written since <laughs> the age, the tender age of seven, from the heart. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. It wasn't always well received, but... Uh, uh, but you, you still know, wrote you it, just get right? used to criticism. Very simple. Either tell us your most embarrassing story, and I'm sure you have many, <laughs> uh, or you just do what's in the envelope. As simple as that. Um, I'll go for what's in the envelope. <gasps> oh, well, well, well. Okay. well, well. <clears throat> yes. Courageous woman. Okay. Is it a check? <laughs> no. No, no. <laughs> uh, it's very, very simple, actually. It's uh, you're to say the following tongue twister five times without making a mistake. Now, the lucky thing for you is it's only three words. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Uh, easy, easy. Yeah. The, the words are 11, benevolent, and elephants. So you go ahead Ooh. and say that fast five times, and you might win a prize. Eleven benevolent. <laughs> That's not one. Do it again. Start again. Eleven benevolent elephants. Eleven, eleven benevolent. Start over. That is so difficult. Yes, I know. Eleven benevolent elephants. Eleven benevolent ele elephants. Eleven benevolent elephants. Eleven benevolent elephants. Benevolent. <laughs> eleven benevolent. <laughs>
<laughs> the three words of tripped out. That's crazy, isn't it? This will be your most embarrassing story on the yes. next show you do. It's, it's hard, hard, isn't it? It is. It is tough. You do it. No. But right now, we're going to get out of your hair, give you some time to zone it. You know what I mean? Get give into me the some zone. space, and we'll see you on the other we'll side. Right. Really shortly. Okay? okay. Bye. All right. Bye. Good luck. Thank you. 11 benevolent elephants. 11 benevolent. Good Lord, who's the. I've never seen a benevolent elephant. <laughs> I came across this letter a couple of days ago, and um, I thought you might like to hear it. It was something that I wrote on behalf of myself and my best friends at school when I was 11 and a half. And this letter was written as a very serious undertaking. It was written on sep in September 1960, and it was written to General Raoul Magrin Benaret who was stationed at the headquarters of the French Foreign Legion in Sidi Bel Abbes in Algeria. Dear General, we are boarders at Headington School in Oxford, England. We have been told that we must begin to think about our futures and do something that will contribute to the world. Last Saturday, we watched a movie about the French Foreign Legion called Fort Algiers, starring Carlos Thompson, who is dreamy. We have decided that we would be very interested in joining your group. We know that we were probably too young, 11 and a half, almost 12, but wanted to get registered early. Our parents, after all, had to register us at birth for Headington School. We expect that there will be some entrance examinations that we have to take. Could you please send us information about this so that we can study? We also wanted you to know that we are used to very strict discipline. We are not allowed to smoke and drink here, but in the movie, you do a lot of this, and we are willing to learn. <laughs> we are also used to wearing uniforms and eating dreadful food. They make us do a lot of gym, and we are very good at climbing ropes and playing field hockey. So we are used to danger and not at all afraid. We are keen to learn parachuting as well. Our school motto is fight the good fight, which is probably a lot like yours. And some of us are quite musical. We play the piano, the harp, and recorders, so we could also be part of your military band. <laughs> we know you are probably very busy, but we really need to show proof to our headmistress that we are prepared for lives of community service when we leave this school. Could you please send us the application forms in a plain envelope, because we are only allowed mail from our parents. It would be good if you could put the sender's address as the Right Honorable Baron Wright, House of Lords, Westminster, London, England. If you put the French Foreign Legion, we might get into a lot of trouble. <laughs> we look forward to being part of your legion and pledge fidelity to all of your rules. Gabrielle McKenzie, Lindsay Rosser, Lady Meredith Swanson, Susan Tolley, and the Honorable Verity Wright. <laughs>